Um, to start this next activity, can you get your bag of Legos again? If you could get your bag of Legos out. And um, as long as we're gathering materials, can you also gather your um, engineering design challenge bag? And remember that there is a magnet in this bag, so be careful where you set that bag down. Don't set it down on your computer or we could lose you for the remainder of the thing. So you, you will need your engineering design bag nearby, away from your cell phone and computer, and you will need your Lego bag as well. What are the Tootsie Rolls for? <laughs> Rose, <laughs> your eyes one question ahead of where we're at. I like the way you think. <laughs> we're going to get there. And, and Rose, right. let me just say they only look like Tootsie Rolls. They're not. All right. Okay. All right. So yesterday I said we, we're moving into uh, transitioning from science uh, to engineering. And this is going to be the official move over there to let you experience an engineering project versus a science experiment. Um, so I'm gonna just going to get right into it uh, with a variation of what we did yesterday. Yesterday we did say it, do it. Today we are going to have a little game of something called write it, do it. All right. So let me give you the goal here of write it, do it. The group goal is just like yesterday. The goal here is going to be 100% of you, myself included this time, I'm playing along with you, build an identical structure. We do have an engineer in our midst, Chloe, who designed a structure in, at the University of Madison with all the other drill rig people. And she actually put together assembly instructions that she sent to Antarctica. And our job is in Antarctica, we're going to put together her structure that she put the directions together for. The group cannot talk to each other. So we're going to ask everybody to mute your, um, when, when we start this, we're going to ask everybody to go on mute with your microphones, but you can see each other. That's okay. And, uh, one person, in this case, it's Leanne, has generously volunteered. She just found out. Uh, Leanne is going to be the person who, when she is convinced that everybody on the screen has the exact same structure built, Leanne is going to flash the thumbs up, and that will be the time that uh, you know we, we think that we're all done 100%. So you can see each other. You can't talk. And this is right at do it. So all we're going to have is a chance to look at Chloe's written directions on how to build this thing. I'm going to quit, stop sharing, and I'm going to turn it over to Chloe. And Chloe's going to take over and share her instructions with you all. Can this be made larger? Go to view options next to Chloe's green screen up there and go down and you can make it bigger on your screen. She's also making it bigger on her screen.
can we have some Jeopardy music, please? <laughs> And Leanne, I guess you're allowed to talk to the group enough to at least see if they're ready or not. So, but not to help them build or clarify. So however you want to figure out if they're ready is up to you. Okay, Russ, I see yours. Can you show me yours again, Bill? Seeing yours, Lou. I like that. Do you see how, if everybody looks at how Bill has his, if you could show me that same view, that's the best way to see if it's all together correctly. Okay, Louise. Khaldun, could you flip yours so I can just, oh yeah, that looks right. It's hard for me to see. You've got yours the opposite direction of other people. Khaldun. Flip it around. Okay, Karen, that looks actually, great. Go ahead, Leanne. Leanne, you're muted. Just saying I'm technologically challenged. I was trying to get to see everybody, so, okay. Can you see mine? That's what I was gonna ask. Can you see the color? Can okay, you flip the, it the other direction? Like that? Jim, yours looks good. Uh, no, you need to move one of yours over, uh, Rose. I have the light. Carol, that looks great. Light pink and dark pink. Let me see again. This is light pink, look like a white, and this is the dark pink. They should overlap, though. Look at um, Dominic. Yours needs to be moved up onto the white. Oh, I see. Oh, wait, I'm not supposed to be giving directions. <laughs> so, Dominic, right, check right. yours. You, you have an error. Rose, you had an error also. Show it to me now. Marmita, hold yours up. Yeah. Uh, no, that's not right either. No. Which one is uh, not right? Uh, the the pinks, check your pinks. Oh, okay. I'll do that looks. Light pink love. Remata, can you show me yours? Okay, so you should have, look at, check your pinks out also. Okay, that looks right now. Matt, can I see yours? Okay. Sarah? Can you flip it for me? Upside down, yeah. Okay. Uh, that looks good. Chloe? Can I see yours, Chloe? There are my instructions. I can't build my own. Oh, that's oh cheating, sorry. Right? <laughs> sorry. Right. I mean, I could, but that's cheating. <laughs> sorry. I'm just making sure I got everybody. Did I miss anyone? Okay, yeah. that's good. Okay. 
All right. Nice job. Give yourselves a round of applause. That's nice. And uh, <laughs> give Chloe a double round Thanks of applause. Those were excellent instructions. Thanks, bosses. Only problem I see is if you're colorblind. <laughs> wow, that that was a tough. challenge. My Lego oh, was no, red. Yeah, the colorblind cannot separate the red and green only, right? Or do they have problem with the other color? They can have problems with the other colors. Oh, I see. Okay. If you are going to use colors, try to use as, as kind of primary and as distinct of differences. Don't use like, you know, three shades of blue um, to help prevent that. My boy is, is colorblind and that's been one of the things. Textures can help too. If you put like something on it to make it a distinct texture, that helps. I like like tacky glue or like the, the puffy paints. Yeah, Chloe, excellent set of directions again. Really, really nicely written. It was really, I, I had no idea how you were going to go about that. And it is interesting. I'm guessing, Chloe, you have some geology background or something? I do, yes. Yeah, there you go. You can tell that she goes by the map reading in the north, south, east, west. So um, really interesting to see how, uh, how, how people approach that. You know, Dom, I'm sure Dom students would say, you know, the right shoulder area, you know, the left shoulder area as they're designing, uh, you know, fabric and stuff. So. Really nicely done, but um, I'm gonna show you how that fits within this next activity. We're gonna do part of the next activity and then I'll show you there's multiple levels that you can take this next activity to. Um, so we're gonna start at the first level and we'll show you where all the other levels are after this. But this is definitely an engineering project. So as we begin, I'd like to just refresh the difference between science and engineering. And, and this is based off um, Elementary school teachers, high school teachers have all adopted what's called the next generation science standards. And in the next generation well, let science- me Let me interrupt for just a second. You've got your chat box on the window. I don't think you mean oh, to. And no. it's kind of covering Thank the you. page. Thank you. Sorry about that. Very much. Nope, thanks. Um, so all of your students, as time goes on, should be exposed to these next generation science standards. And so this is just so that you know what, what they're emphasizing. Um, you know, science is how does this affect that? Usually when I think about science, we think of independent and dependent variables uh, and testing those variables. We're gonna make the shift in this activity to move on to engineering design or engineering. And engineering is all about design. And in engineering, there's some kind of a problem and you're designing a solution to that problem. And Mary showed you this engineering design cycle yesterday um, there's a million engineering design cycles out there that you can find. Again, I like to find the most simple one possible. And this was the most simple design cycle that we could find. And we're going to go through just one time through this cycle. We're not even going to get through this cycle. We're going to start our way through this engineering design cycle. We're going to design something today. We're going to build it and we're going to test it. Now, if they were really doing this with students, the right way to go is to complete the cycle and go through another iteration and improve it then you design an improved structure, build it, test it again. You keep going on and on and on. I'm a big Formula One fan, uh, a car race fan, and I like it because it's like a giant science experiment every week when they go racing. And as the season goes on, these teams of 100 engineers or so for each car will come out with improvements, new iterations of the car. And by the end of the season, the car is completely different than where they started with. So I just love the science aspect of, of the sport, but it's, it's a classic, a sport built on the engineering design cycle. So with that said, here's what I'd like to do is um, what, one more little piece for your notes there. If you're working on the engineering design cycle, one of the really important things as you design projects for your students is to be very specific with what the criteria for success is and be very specific with what the constraints are. So if you keep those two things in mind as you're designing engineering projects, you know, don't just say, oh, go do this, which you might, but then your criteria is it has to meet this and there are no constraints. That might be your constraint. 
But I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you um, a project that's going to have very specific criteria and very specific constraints. All right, here is the project. Your challenge is going to be to design a drilling rig that you can pull across the ice and retrieve an ice core barrel with the ice core sample in it. Now, we are going to use models of all these things since we're not really out on the ice, so I'll take you through what this will look like. But you are actually going to build a drilling rig model, a functional drilling rig model. Let me talk about the criteria. I'll come back and put the challenge up again. Your assembled drill rig must be able to be pulled across a table. Okay, the table is going to represent the ice sheet and you have to be able to pull it across there. You have to be able to lift up an ice core sample. It's got to get up to the surface of the table. You've also got to incorporate a pulley system. The carabiner and string is going to be your pulley system. And I will put all these criteria back up on the screen when we're done. So if you're not keeping up, don't panic. They're all coming back again. Let me show you what your constraints are. You can only use the materials provided. Go ahead and uh, let's get this bag in front of you, your engineering design challenge bag. And I'll show you what materials are in there. You have um, about 10 different construction beams. These almost look like they're for barbecue shish kebab sticks, but no, they're high tech construction beams. Be careful, they are sharp. All right. All right, so there are construction beams. Next, you got a drill rig pulley. It almost looks like one of those carabiners but it certainly can act as a pulley. It's got a very low coefficient of friction if you put things over it. So the carabiner is gonna be actually your drill rig pulley system. Next, rows for you. We have sub-zero connector putty, specifically engineered and designed to get stronger as it gets colder. The colder this sub-zero putty gets, the stronger and better adhesive it, it is. And my experience is you always need to get about twice as many adhesive putties as you think you're gonna need because some of them tend to disappear during class. All right, next. You got some lifting, you got some cable here. It looks like string, but that is actually pulley cable. You can use the pulley cable, and this is also pulling string. If you notice that that uh, snowmobile is connected to the drill rig as they pulled that somewhat portable drill rig across the ice, you also have a cable here. You can use that cable any way you want. Um, we do have a, a shipping container. If you wanted to ship it to Antarctica, you could put it in there. We're actually not going to use the shipping container today. But then I do want to show you this. You have a uh, an ice core lifting collar. This is capable of lifting a lot on an ice core. Here is your ice core. And your ice core lifting collar can, it's designed to fit strategically exactly onto that. So you can lift your ice core with that. So those are the parts that you have. I'm going to show you, this is how I would uh, suggest setting it up in your classroom, is by pulling two tables together. Um, we're going to have to be creative here as you guys test in your own houses and in your own labs. Uh, we do want you to, when you, when you go to test, pull it somewhere, but you will have to get the drill rig so that the cable can drop down underneath the table site. So I don't know how you guys are going to have to work it in your houses, but I'll let you guys figure out that. Um, Russ has got a ringer in there. He can have his, his, his row and help him there, but 
you guys will be able to figure that out one way or another. But that's how I set it up in class. So the classroom testing model, the kids would pull it across the table, which would be the ice sheet until they get over the hole or the gap, and then they can go down and retrieve it. Um, the tables are the ice sheet. The metal pipe on the floor is the ice core. So somewhere down on the floor, you're going to take your ice core, you're going to put it on the floor, and that's what you have to retrieve. The drill rig does have to be pulled into position. So before you actually go to retrieve the ice core, make it so that you can pull your drill rig a little bit. And uh, I think that is it. So it is now 9.55. We're going to give you guys 15 minutes. So that's still about 10 after 10. You can work with your microphones off. I'd appreciate if you guys take your microphones off so it can be a, a group discussion. If you want to ask each other questions, you're welcome to ask each other questions. If you have design ideas, you can pass them along to each other. Um, if you run into problems, you can ask each other for help. Uh, but we'll take 15 minutes and see if you guys can actually get a functioning drill rig built with these pieces in the next 15 minutes. All those ideas. Yeah, you can get all those meet ideas from each other and then build your next iteration. We just have to do our work on our design. But we can't use anything else, right? We only have to use what you give us. Yeah, well, my, my constraints for this project, again, is you guys design your own, uh, take your ideas and modify it for your own classrooms. You can come. <laughs> your own criteria. For this, I said, yes, you did have to only use the materials in the bag. Oh my God, I hate these magnets. <laughs> well, All right. My and table get... has a piece of metal on the side and when the magnet went down and pulled it up, <laughs> it hit the side of the table and just pulled the drill apart. It was doing great. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. If God. anyone wants to see a, a version that actually works, that's what I got here. Yeah, let me yeah. see. It. I think so. I've got one here too. Well, well, so if you can film that also and put it up on uh, the, if you can get your assistant there to film with your camera and then put it up. Yeah. Okay. For those of you that are having problems with the joints, what I did it with the putty is I, you know, snaked it out. I made it long strings and then wrapped that around whatever joint I was using, and it's oh. reasonably strong. Yeah. So. I actually. Uh, I had warmed it up a little bit, like you were saying, and wrapped it, but then to move it across my table, I used the Tootsie Roll wrappers to wrap around for extra um, strength, but to make it move across the table because the wood table is uh, loving yeah. the stickiness. Oh, yeah. I'll, uh, nice. I'll post mine. I don't know if it's exactly the smallest, but I used a square for um, foundation and then triangle for upright. So I'll see. Yeah. That's what I did. I like the ice skate idea wrappers. That's a good good plan. <laughs> Slides much better. And not to put any pressure on you guys, but on my screen in the bottom right hand corner, we've we have have had Zoe arrive. And I think Zoe is just like a uh, master engineer or something. Isn't that your aren't you a mechanical engineer, Zoe? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So no no pressure, but there's a mechanical engineer in the room now. So. so she should be done already then. <laughs> uh, I mostly, I study snow, so I, I don't know how helpful I'd be. <laughs> Russ, how did you use your pulley? What is it? All I did is, so. Hey, Lauren. I create all, all I created was a top. I used two of the putties on the top to hold my corner and just resting it on the top where it's mostly on the stick. So um, I didn't try to get anything fancy because otherwise well, that makes sense. Crazy. That's cool. Yeah. We have about so. we have about two or three minutes left and then I'm gonna uh, just finish up my slides so we can uh, show you where you can take these types of activities if you want to go further and then uh, to turn it over to our real engineering room, Zoe, to, so she can share her engineering. Did someone call my name? 
Someone said, hey, Lauren. Or not. Maybe you I'm know hearing. what I figure? Um, Bill, I forgot to use the Tootsie Rolls. So I had to end up doing that without using any. Uh, oh, it looks, like you're eating it looks like you're eating the Tootsie Rolls, Rose. I know, right? <laughs> 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 I was trying to connect everything with the rope. I'm sorry, my daughter's name is Lauren. I was trying to get her to come down the videotape because the mountain <laughs> no sticks problem. to my desk. <laughs> <laughs> but they taste good, huh? I mean, they smell good. I haven't eaten yet, sorry. <laughs> hey, grocer, does Current Wars ring a bell? I think so. What's the okay. what's the description of it? It's like it's live action. It's not a documentary, right? But it's not a documentary. It's a real movie. Yeah, yeah. It's Tesla, right then. House, <laughs> and, it, and it talks about the World's Fair. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, so maybe post that in the chat box there. You got it. Thanks. Well, uh, by the way, this Sub Zero putty does not work well in air conditioning. Uh, well, you know, Dom, the, the colder it gets, the, the stronger it gets. So <laughs> it also doesn't work well when it gets to about 100 degrees. I found <laughs> it seems to melt. <laughs> well, can you look at this? Hey, that's nice. That's real nice. Does it lift it? Oh, very nice. Uh -huh. is, it, is it tall enough? Does it get the, will, it, will, it, will the ice core clear the ground when you lift it all the way up? Well, no, it's not because the, the thread is not tall enough. So I put uh, a printer. I have a printer. You see this, the printer on the? Got it. I mean, on the, uh, at the surface of your ice. So at your table height, can you, can you clear the top of the table? Ah, uh, yes. So I have two tables, this one and this one. Nice. How did you guys do the pulling it across the table part? Like I, I got, I could get it up on the table, but. That well, I have two tables. Yeah, so the way, the way that I set it up. Um, you see this, this area? Yeah. That's two tables. Can, yeah, can you put this video uh, like uh, in the Padlet? Yep, yeah. there, there is a video. I close. If, oh. if you actually go to the. Um, and, and maybe Lauren and, and Layla can go find this, but if you go into our uh, icedrill.org um, slash education website that Louise has, th there is an engineering design, a whole handout on this. And um, th there's also videos in the teacher resources with how to build it and classroom hints and things like that. So all of that is I, part I of it. I just want to get, uh, like, how will this work? Like, put the string around or? So, um, Paramita, I used it. I'm trying to post my video, but I don't know where to put it on the Padlet because um, I don't see a engineering girl. Uh, but but you can I put it in reflection. We'll see that. Yeah. Anyway, well, yeah. Louise is going to add. Uh, yeah. I just used it as I'll a single it pulley, though. Right now, sorry. You used it as a, as a just as a single pulley. So someone would have to be pulling it from the surface uh, because my tabletop is a lot taller than the the string allows to make it a double pulley. So it's literally more of just two ropes over one. So as soon as I get that up, I can, <laughs> I can show you what I mean. <laughs> All right, so she's Perfect. gonna post that. While, while you guys are working, I'm gonna finish up here so we can get Zoe in front of you guys. Um, on your screens while you're working, we started in on part one of this, um, just designing a drill rig that could actually meet the criteria. Ways that you can expand this to more model what real engineers do is part two, then you would almost do like our right to do it. You would create a detailed part list and assembly instructions. That's why we modeled this with Chloe when we started today with the little Legos, was trying to put something together from a set of instructions. The third part of this that would be really fun is once you got your kit working, for example, I know uh, like Russ said, he had a system that worked, Karen said she had a system that works. The challenge would be to actually write up your parts kit, put it all in a bag and switch with another group. 
and then see if they could use your instructions to put your kit together because that's what people like Zoe have to do when they go to the ice. They fly to Antarctica, they have a drill that gets delivered on a plane. They have to put it together based on the instructions that some engineer at the University of Madison wrote. So that's the last part. Uh, and then success would be assemble that drill rig, pull it across the table and actually retrieve an ice core. Uh, would be the last part of that. So, you know, we envision this up to, you know, five different distinct steps in your classroom if you want to take the engineering to that uh, extent. 